Section 1 And shall they give every man a ransom for his soul? We are reminded that heavenly blessings do not accrue to anything that has been counted or numbered, and yet the children of Israel were subjected to a census. Israel were blessed nonetheless because they were ransomed. One and Hashem spoke to Moses, saying, When you do take the sum of the children of Israel after their number, Shema 3011 to 13, Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Icha, and Rabbi Yussi were traveling from Tiberias to Tsipara. While they were traveling, they saw Rabbi Lazar coming with Rabbi Shi. Rabbi Abba said, We shall surely join the Sheshanah. They waited until they reached them. As soon as they came to them, Rabbi Lazar said, It is most certainly written, The eyes of Hashem are towards the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. Tehillim 3416. This passage is difficult. The end of the subject is in the portion of Pekudi Ipara 68. F2 come and behold, it has been established that celestial blessing does not dwell on something that is numbered. And if you ask how Israel were counted, he took from them a ransom for themselves, and they did not count until all the ransom that was gathered was counted. Thus, at first, Israel are blessed when the ransom is received. Afterwards, once they counted the ransom, Israel are blessed again. So we find that Israel is blessed at the beginning and at the end, and they did not suffer a plague. Three, he asks, Why is a plague caused by counting? He answers, Because the Blessing does not dwell on anything numbered, and since the blessing has departed, the other side dwells on it and can harm. Therefore, we receive ransom and redeem it in order to do the counting. And we have already discussed and learned this section. Two half a shekel. Rabbi Shimon begins by speaking about the commandment to give half a shekel and says it is like the vav placed between the two. He's the faithful shepherd Moses and follows with a discussion of the commandment to sanctify the month. He says that the holy moon Malchut is the bride that becomes hallowed by Bira of Zir and Ben, in which are the loveth who shall also be hallowed. And when the moon becomes visible, we bless it with Tiferet Rai Mahim to the faithful shepherd. For there is a commandment to give half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. He asks, What is the half shekel? He answers, It is like a half in which is vav, which I has placed between the two. He's the stone with which. To weigh Yad a shekel is twenty gerashema three thousand and thirteen refers to Yad Vavdalat the rich shall not give more of it fifteen refers to the central column Zeir and that should not give more than ten and so have we learned in the book of formation ten Sfirat of nothingness ten not eleven and the poor shall not give less of it refers to the righteous that is Yezid he must not give less than ten as is said in the book of formation ten and not nine and half a shekel which is ten five it seems that the author of the previous paragraph was Rabbi Shimon and the faithful shepherd said to him you are in heaven you are loved by your master therefore it is no wonder that all these precious words come from your mouth for if one is a king or a prince there is no wonder his table is full of gems and treasures and full of lights for anyone else this would be a wonder he said to him blessed are you faithful shepherd from now on you speak for those above and below have come to hear he said to him finish your words, he said to him, I have nothing more to say for the time being. You speak six. The faithful shepherd opened the discussion with the following commandment is to sanctify the month. The holy moon, namely Malchut, is the bride that becomes hallowed by the court of law, which is Gura of Zeir and Ben. Because Malchut is built from the left side, which is Gura as the ring, Gura of Zeir and Ben are the Levites, for it is said of them, and you shall hallow the Levites also Malchut, which is a big Gura of Zeir and Ben needs sanctification. And afterwards, when the moon is visible and we can enjoy its light, meaning after it received Mokin, we bless it. Blessed are you, Hashem, our Elohim, King of the universe, with his utterance, he created the heavens and with the breath of his mouth all their hosts, and with what is it hallowed, and blessed it is with Tiferet glory, because it is glory to those born by him from birth and of Rai Mahim, the section three. Sun worship at dawn. Rabbi Shi remarks how all the inhabitants of the east are at that moment worshiping the rising sun. He says that from ancient days it was known that before the sun emerges, the prince appointed over it goes forth with the holy letters of the supernal name written on his head, and with the power of those letters he opens the windows of heaven and passes through. Then he remains there until the sun emerges. Rabbi Shi adds that that prince is in charge over gold and red jewels. He says that the sun worshippers know the spots of the sun. Rabbi Yossi asks how long it will be that idols are still in the world, and says that falsehood cannot endure. Seven. Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shi were traveling while they were still walking. It became dark, and they sat down while they were still sitting. Dawn began to light up. They got up and went on. Said Rabbi Yossi, the east has lit up. Now all those inhabitants of the east of the mountains of light are bound to this light that. Illuminates in the place of the sun before it emerges over the face of the earth and worship it. Many worship the sun after it comes out. They worship this light of the breaking dawn and call this light the deity of the illuminating jewels. And they swear by the deity of the illuminating jewels. Eight. And you may ask if this worship is not in vain. From the early ancient days, the wisdom was known that when the sun shines before it emerges over the face of the earth, the prince appointed over the sun goes forth with the holy letters of the supernal name written on his head. With the power of these letters, he opens all the windows of heaven, smites them, and passes through. And that prince enters into the glow that shines around the sun before it emerges and remains there until the sun emerges and spreads over the world. Nine. And that prince is in charge over gold and red jewels. They worship that form that is there in the light of the sun, which is the prince with the spots and signs that. They inherited from the ancient in olden days they then know the spots of the sun and they go and find the places of gold and jewel said Rabbi you see how long will the many idols be in the world falsehood has no pillars to support IT in order to exist section 4 the lip of truth shall be established forever we read that the light and radiation from the sun is true and the stars in the firmament are true just because in their lack of wisdom people call them Elohim. God does not have to destroy the sun and stars they will not perish but eventually those that worship them will perish Israel are the lip of truth and they will still exist in the time to come the story is recounted of a general who tells Rabbi Lazar that since the kingdom of Israel was removed from them it is Israel who are the lying tongue but Rabbi Lazar explains to him that the verse says the lip of truth shall be established forever in the future not now for now the lip of Falsehood endures we are told that the general converted after this encounter ten the other opened the discussion and said the lip of truth shall be established forever but a lying tongue is but for a moment Mishlei 1219 come and behold if all the inhabitants of the world always worship falsehood then it would be so they would cease to exist but this light and radiation that shines from the sun is certainly true and the stars that are in the heights of the firmament are also true and if in their foolishness and lack of understanding they say and call them Elohim the Holy One blessed be he does not have to destroy his creations from the world because of this and also in the time to come the stars and luminaries will not perish from the universe but who will perish those that worship them will perish eleven and this verse the lip of truth shall be established forever refers to the children of Israel who are the lip of truth for they say Hashem are Elohim Hashem is one. Devarim 64 and it is all true and the secret of truth and they end the reading of SHMA with Hashem your Elohim is true and hence the lip of truth shall be established forever 12 but for a moment lit I will calm down he asks it should say for a moment but it says calm down he answers they will long exist in the world until the future to come and I will have respite from their difficult worship because calm down means I shall have rest and at the time that I will calm it. False tongue will perish, meaning those who call Elohim that which is not Elohim but of the children of Israel who are the lip of truth it is written this people which I have formed for myself that they might say my praise. Yeshayah 4321 13 I remember one time when I was traveling with Rabbi Lazar he met a general he said to Rabbi Lazar do you know the Torah of the Jews he said to him I know he said to him do you not say that your faith is true and your Torah is true but our faith is false and our Bible is false but it is written the lip of truth shall be established forever and the lying tongue is but for a moment Mishlei 1219 we have existed from time immemorial and our kingdom has never left us generation after generation hence assuredly it is established forever but as for you for a short period you had a kingdom and immediately it was removed from you thus the passage has been fulfilled by you that says and the lying tongue is but for a moment 14 he said to him I see that you are a scholar in Torah may that man breathe his last had it said the lip of truth was established forever then it would
You shall be ashamed and confounded. Yeshayah 4111. The Holy One, blessed be he, shall do all this good that he said through the true prophets for Yisrael. Yisrael suffered much evil in exile, and were it not for all this good written in the Torah that they were waiting to see, they would not have been able to withstand and tolerate the exile. 17. But they go to the study hall, open books, and read all the hope for good, and they see written in the Torah what the Holy One, blessed be he, promised them. And they are comforted in exile, but the other nations scorn and revile them and say, Where is your Elohim? Where is the good you say shall be yours when all the other nations shall be shamed before you? 18. This is the meaning of hear the word of Hashem, you that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, who cast you out for my name's sake. Yeshayah 665. Who are they that tremble at his word? It is those who have suffered many evils, many evil tidings, one upon another and one after. Another they heard and trembled because of them as it is written for thus says Hashem we have heard a voice of trembling of fear and not of peace. Here may 305 they tremble constantly over his word when judgment is executed. 19 your brethren that hated you there your brethren the children of Esau who cast you out as it is written away unclean they cried at them each of 415 there are no people that shame Israel to their faces and spit in their faces like the children of Edom and they say about Israel that they are all impure like the impurity of a menstruating woman this is who cast you out for my name's sake have said let Hashem be glorified for they say we are the children of the living El and by us will his name be glorified we rule over the world because of him who is called big as it is written Esau the bigger the elder son bear she 2715 with this name big is the holy one blessed be he called as it is written great is Hashem and highly to be praised. Tehillim 1453 We are his big little elder son and he is great most certainly it is said of us for my name's sake let Hashem be glorified 20 and they say to the children of Israel but you are the smallest of all as it is written Jacob her small little younger son bear she 2715 where is your Elohim where is your goodness that all the nations shall be shamed before your joy who will grant it so that we see your joy as you say they shall be ashamed Yeshayah 4111 they should have said you will be ashamed but they spoke as if referring to someone else saying then Israel shall be ashamed and confounded yet they said they shall be ashamed as cursing another therefore the Holy Spirit said the phrase so that in truth they will be shamed and of this it is written behold all they that were incensed against you shall be ashamed and confounded what is all they that were incensed had Nicharim against you their nostrils had Nicharim became hardened in their anger against you in this exile because at that time in the future they shall be ashamed and confounded from all the goodness they shall see in Israel. Section 6 The exile goes on. Rabbi Shia says that the exile has gone on for a long time but still the son of David has not come. Rabbi Shia answers that the pledge that God has guaranteed them enables them to bear their exile otherwise they would never be able to tolerate it although everything depends on repentance still there are many people who will not repent. We read a story about the mother of a wayward son who weeps for her child who has been exiled by the father and thereby persuades the father to take him back after the son sins again. The father exiles both the boy and his mother. The story shows why God exiled the children of Israel to Egypt. We read that God wants the children of Israel to be as a reflection of above perfect lilies like the supernal lily therefore he sowed 70 couples that were 70 souls and Put them among the thorns that were the Egyptians, and the thorns grew branches and ruled over the world with the lily blooming among them. When God wished to retrieve his lilies, the dead thorns were cast aside and destroyed during the exile in Babylon. The children of Israel sinned greatly, and Malchut pleaded with Zer and Ben on their behalf. When they sinned again, God exiled them together with Malchut. Their guarantor, we are told that if people repent, even one pain that they have undergone will be considered as though they have suffered all the pains of exile. If they do not repent, they must wait until all the generations that precede the end appear. 21 said Rabbi Shia, it is certainly so, but we see as well as the mighty ones of the world, meaning the nations that the exile grows long yet the son of David has still not come, said Rabbi. You see, all this is so, but all these pledges that the Holy One blessed be he has guaranteed them to enable Israel to bear this exile, and we have learned. That they enter synagogues and study halls and see all these consolations in the holy books and rejoice in their hearts to suffer whatever comes upon them and were it not for that they would not be able to tolerate it. 22 Rabbi Shia said certainly it is so and everything depends upon repentance if you believe that everyone together can be aroused to repent even now it is not so what is the reason that they cannot because it is written and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon you and you shall call them to mind among all the nations into which Hashem your Elohim has driven you and shall return to Hashem your Elohim to 12 and then if your outcast be at the utmost parts of heaven from there will Hashem your Elohim gather you before and before all these things are fulfilled they cannot be aroused to repentance. 23 Rabbi Yossi said how concealed you have made the ways and paths for all those in exile and have not left them any excuse for otherwise. They will remain as they are meaning that they will not strive for repentance in every generation and will not bear the exile and will not request reward but will depart from the laws of the Torah and will intermingle with the other nations. 24 He opened the discussion saying like a woman with child that draws near the time of her delivery is in pain and cries out in her pangs. Yeshayah 2617 What is like a woman with child it is the way of a pregnant woman to undergo nine complete months. There are many in the world for whom only one or two days of the ninth month pass when all labor and birth pangs are nevertheless it is considered for her as though she has undergone the entire ninth month. This is also the case with Israel since they had the taste of exile if they repent it is considered by them as though all the troubles that are written in the Torah befell them especially since so many troubles have befallen them. 25 But what of the words when you are in distress and all these things are come upon you in the latter days to Barim 430 come and behold how much mercy has the Holy One blessed be he shown on Israel in this matter it is like a king who had an only son whom he loved with his whole soul and his great love for him he gave him over to his mother the queen to raise him and teach him the right ways once the son sinned against his father his father came and beat him and afterwards forgave him when he sinned against his father again his father put him out of his house and was angry with him the son left his house 26 instead of going in the right path to be meritorious as is proper so that his father the king should hear about it and long for him what did he do he thought after having left my father's palace from now on I will do whatever I please then he associated with prostitutes and was besmirched and soiled with them and remained only in their company his mother the queen visited her son daily and knew that her son had joined with prostitutes and associated only with them she started to weep and grieve for her son 27 one day the king came to her and saw her weeping he asked her why she was weeping she said to him how can i not weep our son is outside the king's palace and not only does he no longer live in the king's palace he lives in a brothel what will people say of the king's son who lives in a brothel she started to weep and beseech the king the king said for your sake i will return him but you must be his surety that he does not sin she said i will surely be his guarantor 28 the king said since it is so then it is not advisable to return him during the day publicly for it is an embarrassment for us to follow him to the brothel had it not been so that he soiled himself so and desecrated my honor i and all my hosts would go after him with much glory with many trumpeters before him with many weapons on his right and left so all the inhabitants of the world would tremble and everyone would know that he is the king's son, but now since he has soiled himself and desecrated my honor, he must return stealthily so he will not be recognized. The son returned to the king who gave him over to his mother. 29 After some time he sinned again. What did the king do? He exiled him and his mother with him out of his palace. He said, Both of you go and both of you suffer exile and blows there since both of you will suffer together. Then I know that my son will repent properly. 30 Thus he brought Israel, the children of the holy king, down to Egypt. And you may argue that at that time they had not sinned and he did not bring them down because of sin, but rather it was a decree that the holy one blessed be he decreed between the parts that had to be fulfilled. So it was for the holy one blessed be he looked at two things. One was because of that which Abraham said, By what shall I know that I shall inherit it? Bear sheet 158, which was the cause and grounds for the Egyptian exile, and one was. That before they left Egypt they were not a nation and were not worthy to be a nation. 31 He opened the discussion and said like the lily among thorns so is my love among the daughters. Sure Hashirim 22 The Holy One blessed be he wanted to
rebelled against his father he put him out of his house what did the children of Israel do they saw that they were dispersed in Babylon they mingled with the nations married foreign women and begot children by them with all this the holy mother namely Malchut was their guardian she pleaded on their behalf before the king's eir and 34 because they did this the holy one blessed be he said since this is an embarrassment for me let my son come by himself since he desecrated my honor he is not worthy that I should go there to take him out and perform miracles and mighty deeds as before in Egypt they returned without the help that they should have had without wonders and miracles rather they were dejected weary in poverty and returned to the king's palace in shame and the holy mother who was Malchut was a guarantor for them 35 they sent as before what did the holy one blessed be he do he took his son out of his palace again and his mother with him he said from now on it Mother and her son are together, let them suffer many evils. This is the meaning of, and for your transgressions was your mother put away. Shea 501 of this is it written when you are in distress, and all these things are come upon you in the latter days. Devarim 430, what is the latter days? This is the holy mother, namely Malchut, which is the last of the tents of and together with her they suffered whatever they suffered in exile. 36, but if they repent, then even one pain or one evil they underwent would be considered for them as though they suffered all the troubles of exile. But if not, if they do not repent, they must wait until the end with all its generations, as the holy luminary said the words forever. Bayakra 2523 refer to the purchaser for generations, that is until all the generations that precede the end appear, and with all this it depends upon repentance. Rabbi Shia said it is certainly so, therefore the exile goes on section 7 and it shall come to pass in the last days we learn that in the last days God will perform both miracles and vengeance for the children of Israel the discussion moves to the cup of blessing that must be raised high this is alluded to in and shall be exalted above the hills and means that the good that will befall Israel will be in the last days we are told that God told Moses that even though Israel sin in every generation he still does not want anyone else to slander them he has given them many blessings in order that they may repent and return to their father in heaven 37 however all that the holy one blessed be he saw pertaining to the children of Israel is at this end of days meaning Malchut and in this last days he will perform for the miracles and vengeance as is written and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Hashem's house shall be established on the top of the mountains Yeshua 22 what is the top of the mountains this is Abraham it Patriarch who is Chesed called high priest meaning Chesed that ascended to Chachma which is the top of them all because Chesed is the top of the seven lords Farah and because he is the top of the cup of blessing which is Malchut he will be established at the top of the mountains this is Abraham the patriarch the first of the other mountains because Chesed Bura and Tiferet are called mountains and Chesed is the first of them thus the cup of blessing which is Malchut has to be prepared on the right which is Chesed 38 and shall be exalted above the hills if it this alludes to the cup of blessing that should be raised above the table to the measure called this span to bless the holy one blessed be this is the meaning of exalted above the hills what is above the hills he answers by and between the virgins her companions that follow her tail in 4515 there is a measurement of a span therefore the cup of blessing is definitely raised above the hills therefore the Good that will befall the firstborn son namely Israel will be in the last days 39 he said to him you have spoken well this verse is certainly so on the top of the mountains is right which is Abraham the patriarch who is certainly the top of the mountains the top of Chesed Bura and Tiferet that are called mountains and exalted above the hills meaning the measure of hills which are her companions and you spoke well and all the nations shall flow to it Yeshayah 22 what is it? Meaning according to your words that the passage refers to the cup of blessing he said to him it means even women and children and the waiter who serves at the table even if one does not eat one must listen to the blessings and answer amen so that no one would say if I do not eat since I am not included in a quorum I will not listen nor say amen therefore it says and all the nations shall flow to it since everyone is obligated in it 40 another explanation of and all the nations will flow to it although women and children are exempted from commandments everyone is obligated to the cup of blessing only they have to know whom they are blessing and this is the meaning of and all the nations shall flow to it rabbi yussi came and kissed him he said how beautiful are these words and how sweet to the palate 41 here we must point out that if the last days is the actual cup of blessing meaning malchut what is the mountain of hashem's house it should have been written thus and it shall come to pass in the last days that it will be established on the top of the mountains what is the meaning of in the last days that the mountain of hashem's house shall be established this is a repetition because the last days is malchut and the mountains of hashem's house is also malchut he replies the last days refers to the whole tree meaning the entire malchut from top to end which is the tree of knowledge of good and evil according to the secret of if he merits it is good but if he does not merit it is evil and the passage came to refine the last days and extracted the mountain of Hashem's house which is the good of Malchut without evil this is surely the mountain of Hashem's house where the other side has no part because the mountain of Hashem's house has been extracted from the tree which is the last days and this is the cup of blessing which is established on the top of the mountains 42 Rabbi Yossi said blessed is this path that we merited that interpretation he said to him from whom did you hear it he said to him one day I was walking on the road and I heard and saw Rabham Manasava expounding upon this passage for Rabbi Yossi when I heard it I rejoiced over it and kept it bound in the corner of my garment so that it should never leave me he said certainly this holy subject was illuminated by the holy luminary blessed is the generation that preserves the world which pillars dwell in it and if you tie this interpretation with a knot so that it shall not leave you I will tie it with thirty or forty knots in my pocket so that it shall never leave me. Forty-three the beginning of this essay is missing in this subject the Holy One blessed be he showed Moses that even though the children of Israel sin before him in every generation he does not wish anyone to slander them how do we know this from Hosea as it is written when Hashem spoke at first with Hosea Hashia 12 and we have established the matter that he answered. The Holy One blessed be he to pass them to another nation as written there and hence and the number of the children of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea Hashia 21 for because of this he blessed them with many blessings to cause them to repent and return to their father in heaven and he did not move from there until the Holy One blessed be he forgave their sins and they were purified before him section 8 what are you doing here Elijah this section tells. How God questioned Elijah as to why after having been so zealous in his service he was now in hiding he reminds him that he had through Moses given him his covenant of peace since Elijah is pinches in reincarnation 44 of Elijah it is written and came and sat down under a broom tree I may lodge him 194 he said master of the universe you sent a woman to Israel Deborah by name as it is written and she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah shoved him 45 this is a broom tree Elijah sat under and she returned them to good conduct as it is written until I Deborah arose shoved him 57 and I have come among them and have spoken loud before them yet I cannot make them repent 45 while he was still sitting the holy one blessed be he appeared to him he said to him what are you doing here Elijah I may lodge him 199 at first you were accusing and zealous for the covenant meaning during the days of Moses and when I saw that you were zealous for me through that covenant I took it with it. Agreement of Moses and gave it to you. So Moses said, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace. Be midbar 2512 as pinches is Elijah, and now that it is yours, it is not proper for you to denounce it. You should have left your zealousness to me as before when the covenant was mine, and I gave it to another, but did not speak against it. 46. What are you doing here, Hepo? He asks, What is Po? He answers, The holy covenant is a mouth, Hepo, Hashem, referring to it. It is written, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace, and the holy one blessed be. He said to him, Since you did not want to let go of your mouth, namely the mouth that is zealous for the covenant, let the mouth that I gave you, namely the covenant of peace, return to the place of that earlier mouth, namely to Hashem. We have learned that at that moment the present that Moses gave him, namely the covenant of peace, was taken from him. This we have learned from the words, and went in the strength of that melt of it. Mountain of Elohim I may lodge him 198 meaning to ask it from there he asks did he ask it from there one asks from Hashem he answers but it was to ask for what he had before from him who inherited this covenant on the mountain of Elohim that is Moses pinches is Elijah certainly they are on the same level Mo
people to be the leaders of the people and observe them and their customs and who is responsible and obligated to provide for their the leaders food and necessities if not the people of that country they are obligated to provide for them so they shall lack for nothing and to honor them 49 I sent Moses and he brought you manna to eat let you and your children and your animals and strove in your laws and in everything you needed I sent Aaron he brought sanctuaries of clouds of glory to cover you like kings he moistened you with the dew of glory so that your clothes and shoes would not decay but would be renewed daily I sent Miriam she brought a well to give you drink so you and your animals drank water they gave to you and it is of their own that you ate and drank and dwelt under the cloud of glory but from your own you gave nothing moreover they strove for your sakes and took your burden on their necks yet you scorned and reviled them section 10 now therefore let me alone Rabbi Yossi tells us that God is the most merciful father of all for he has never failed one word of all his good promises even though God threatened judgment the mother Malchud held his arm and averted that judgment we are told that Moses did the same thing for Israel as she did and Rabbi Yossi wonders where Malchud was at the time when approached with this question Rabbi Shimon says that all the friends who study Torah together must love one another otherwise they cause a blemish in their counterparts above Abraham Isaac and Jacob who are the secret of Chesed Bura and Tiferet he says that he can reveal a secret he learned from the dean of the Yeshiva in the garden of Eden that when Israel joined in the sins of the heathen nation they committed a sin against the mother Malchud thus they caused the Shechinah to be exiled with them and exchanged their glory for the likeness of an ox Rabbi Shimon tells us the secret of the likeness of the ox and what it means that the ox eats grass. The conclusion to be drawn is that the mother was blemished and was thus absent when Moses stayed the hand of God from judging Israel. Rabbi Shimon says, though, that both the one who raises the lash and the one who restrains it are both of the same mind. 50 Rabbi Yossi said, There is no father more merciful to his children than the Holy One. Blessed be he, for it is written, There has not failed one word of all his good promise. I may lash him 856. Come and behold his mercy. If it had said, There has not failed one word of all his promise, and no more, this would have included his harsh words also, then it would be better for the world not to have been created because it would be impossible to bear it. But since it said of all his good promise and left his harshness, it implies that, that he left off the harsh words he spoke of Israel and they did not come true. From here we see his mercy because he does not want to do an evil thing. 51 And even though he Threatened and raised the lash his mother came and held his right arm and the lash remained in its place and did not descend and judgment was not executed because they were really of one mind the one who threatened and the one who held his arm 52 and you may ask whence we derive this this is well known as it is written go get you down for your people have become corrupt Shema 327 the Holy One blessed be he started to raise the lash but Moses did not know the way of the mother namely to hold his right hand and detain him and remain silent when the Holy One blessed be he saw this he hinted to him and pressed him and said now therefore let me alone Ibn 10 immediately Moses realized and grasped the arm of the Holy One blessed be he as it is written remember Abraham Ibn 3 for this is the right arm which is Jesus therefore he did not bring down the lash 53 you may wonder where was the mother who is Malchut who is accustomed to hold the king's lash as mentioned and who Left the matter to Moses I have asked and I still do not know the explanation of the matter until we are before the Holy Luminary meaning Rabbi Shimon when they came before Rabbi Shimon he saw a sign on their faces he recognized what they had come to inquire of him he said come holy children come kings beloved come my beloved come those that are beloved by each other 54 for Rabbi Abba said all the friends who do not love each other die before their time all the friends during the days of Rabbi Shimon loved each other soul and spirit therefore in the generation of Rabbi Shimon the secrets of the Torah were unveiled for Rabbi Shimon used to say all the friends that do not love each other cause themselves to deviate from the straight path also they blemish it the Torah because the Torah has in it love friendship and truth Abraham loved Isaac and Isaac loved Abraham so they embraced each other both were attached to Jacob with love and friendship and gave their spirit to each other the friends must be like them and not cause a blemish in them for if they lack love they cause a blemish in their counterpart above in Abraham, Isaac and Jacob which are the secret of Chesed, Bura and Tiferet 55 as soon as Rabbi Shimon saw the sign on their faces he recognized what they came to ask him he said to them welcome my beloved they said to him assuredly the spirit of prophecy dwells upon the holy luminary and this is what we need to know namely the question mentioned above Rabbi Shimon wept and said this is one of the subjects I was told in secret by the dean of the yeshiva in the garden of Eden it was not told me openly the subject is a secret yet I will tell it to you my beloved sons children beloved of my soul what shall I do they told it to me secretly but I will tell it to you openly and in the future when we shall see the Shechinah face to face all the faces will be supported meaning that they will illuminate by the secret 56 my children the sins that they Outside people, namely the mixed multitude, performed and which the holy people joined in was a sin against the mother which is Malchut as is written of make us Elohim Shema 321 it is Elohim for sure meaning that he should make them a strange Elohim instead of Malchut that is called Elohim instead of the glory of Israel namely Malchut that hovered over them like a mother over her children and this is the secret of thus they exchanged their glory for the likeness of an ox Tehillim 10620. This is the glory of Israel meaning their mother which is Malchut this is the meaning of honor is departed I Shmuel 421 that they caused the Sheshanah to be exiled with them therefore they exchanged their glory for what for the likeness of an ox 57 here is the secret of the matter of the likeness of an ox come and behold below in the dregs of the wine in the evil sediment a demon emerged and accuser the primordial harmful spirit in the secret of the likeness of man and approached. Holiness when he departed from there from holiness and wanted to descend he had to be clothed in a garment in order to harm the world thus he and his chariots descended and the first garment he took was the likeness of an ox namely the image of an ox the first of the four primary causes of injury is the ox and the other three primary causes of injury beside the ox pertain to it to the ox therefore it is written thus they exchanged their glory with the likeness of an ox that eats grass 58. What is the meaning of that eats grass in the words for the likeness of an ox that eats grass he answers we have already expounded upon it but the main point is that it does not have any of the essence of bread and seven species of grain but eats only grass and because of this since they blemished the mother which is Malchut as mentioned mother was not present and it would not be proper for her to be there because they blemished her and since the father who is Zeir and knew the mercy of the mother and her ways he said to Moses my beloved son the remedy for this so that the children of Israel shall not be punished is always in two sums one raises the lash and the other holds it back and restrains as mentioned and since the mother is not present it is incumbent upon you and this is what they told me secretly for it is not proper to reveal it so that the son may not know of it but always see the lash and fear it yet both are of this mind the same mind meaning that the one who raises the lash and the one who restrains it are of the same mind section 11 the golden calf we read that when Israel left Egypt they traveled with the mixed multitude though it is not said exactly which other nations they were the section tells us about the magicians and sorcerers of Egypt that went with them in it Rabbi Shimon tells why Aaron made the golden calf and explains the significance of the golden earrings that people gave for the idol we read of it Role of the magicians in the creation of the calf and the correspondence of this event with the three worlds Briya, Yitzhak, and Asiyah. The only reason that Aaron was able to remedy the problem when the other side became stronger was because he made proclamations and said, Tomorrow is a feast to Hashem. Had he not done this, the world would have ceased to exist. The text returns to the fact that Moses had to restrain the arm of God from judgment. Then we are told that just as Adam was united with the tree of life before he sinned, so were the children of Israel when they stood before Mount Sinai. And like the sin in the garden, the sin of the golden calf again caused death for the whole world. Lastly, Rabbi Abba speaks about the tent of appointed time that has now been blemished thereby interrupting the union of Malchut and Zir and Ben 59. Come and behold, it is written, and when the people saw that Moses delayed Shema 321, who are the people, he answers, They are the mixed multitude. And who was a mixed multitude were they Ludim and Kushim and Kaptarim and Togarim who are called mixed multitude they were Egyptian and traveled from Egypt and if they were a mix
the beginning of nine and a half hours, namely the full setting of the sun when it is time for early mincha. But all the minor magicians would practice magic from nine and a half hours until midnight. Sixty-two, the greater ones among them practiced from the time the sun started to set, because then nine hundred and ninety-five grades start to float over the mountains of darkness, and their spirit hovered over all these magicians in their magic. They were able to do whatever they desired so much so that all the Egyptians placed their trust in them. They were called a mixed multitude or a great evening, because there is also a small evening which is before nine and a half. And since there are two kinds of evening, it says, and a mixed multitude, a great evening went up also with them. Sixty-three, the wisdom of the mixed multitude was great. They observed the hours of the day and they observed the level of Moses and saw that on all sides Moses was of six during the first six hours of daytime. Day. Had no power over the six higher levels to which Moses was connected, and in every direction he was of six head bishish, that is, he was combined of six extremities, Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot, and Yezid, and with these six crowns of the six hours of the day which are Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot, and Yezid, he was destined to descend from the mountain, as it is written, Moses delayed had Bashish to come down from the mountain, Shema 321, 64, immediately the people gathered themselves. Together to Aaron, but he asks why to Aaron, he answers in order to become included in the right side, because the left emerges from the right, but they actually wanted from him the left, not the right, in order to become included in the right side, meaning his root, thus they gathered to Aaron, who is the right Chesed, and they said to him, Rise up, make for us Elohim, but 65, come and behold, the entire time Moses was in Egypt, he did not mention the name Elohim, just the name Yahweh. Hey, Therefore Pharaoh was angry and said, I know not Hashem Shema 52 the reason was not to empower the other side in this world because the other side is also called other Elohim now the mixed multitude wanted that namely the power of the left that is called Elohim and that is the meaning of rise up make for us Elohim us is exact for the mixed multitude said that they needed this in order to strengthen their side that had been thrust aside until now because Moses did not mention the name. Elohim 66 which shall go before us but he asks what did they mean by this he answers this is what they meant we saw that you the children of Israel have all that is good and precious in the world but we are put aside for you Hashem went before them by day Shema 1321 we too want that Elohim to go before us the same way Yahweh hey, goes before you our side also has the power to go before us if we summon it by an action namely making the golden calf 67 come and behold all the Clouds of glory that traveled in the wilderness covered the children of Israel alone and that precious cloud about which it is written and Hashem went before them by day went before them but the mixed multitude and cattle and sheep and animals were traveling outside the camp in the rear come and behold all those forty years that Israel traveled in the wilderness there was no dirt or dust within the place where the clouds were therefore the sheep and cattle that ate grass were outside with all those who guarded them sixty-eight Rabbi Lazar said father if so then the mixed multitude did not eat of the manna he said to him certainly it is so except what Israel gave them as one gives to his servant and what did they eat they ate the leftovers whatever was left behind the millstones the inferior quality the Torah proclaims and says and the children of Israel did eat the manna had ma for forty years Shema one thousand six hundred and thirty-five the children of Israel and no other and when the children of Israel so they said what had man is it of fifteen but not the mixed multitude or the sheep and cattle that were among them sixty-nine until this time the mixed multitude was subdued but now they arose and searched for an action to strengthen the other side they said either we are all one nation and we will be included among Israel with you or let us have someone to go before us just as your Elohim goes before you Aaron said heaven forbid that they should be part of the holy people so all would be united into one the holy nation should not mingle with these people into a whole it is better to separate them from the holy nation until Moses comes seventy Aaron's intention was good but many of Israel joined with the mixed multitude in their hearts therefore when Moses came he had to purify and cleanse the holy nation of that sin and he gave them drink until they were all cleansed and no refuse at all remained in them seventy-one Aaron said to them break off the golden earrings Shema three hundred and twenty-two he Asks did they not have any other gold except for the golden earrings he answers but Aaron thought while they are quarreling with their children and wives they will be delayed and in the meantime Moses will arrive come and behold we have learned that proselytes are as bad to Israel as a sore on the skin and this is especially the case for this mixed multitude who were not proper converts what did they do and all the people broke off the golden earrings that were in their ears of it three many thousands and tens of thousands of earrings were there of the earrings of the mixed multitude seventy two it is written and he received the gold at their hands and fashioned it with a graving tool and before Aaron did not protect himself from the two wise men who were at the head of the mixed multitude one of them was in front of them while the other one was performing his magic after discussing it together they took that gold two thirds in the hand of one and a third in the hand of the other because that is the way it has to be in this type of magic. 73 Rabbi Shimon what he said, O holy pious Aaron, the anointed of the holy El, how many of the people of the holy nation fell in your piety and you did not know how to protect yourself? What did they do when the sixth hour passed and the day was in balance, namely at noon when the sun is in the middle of the sky and turns neither to the east nor the west like the tongue of a scale? They took the gold that they broke off from their ears. What is the reason for this? It is because if one wants to practice magic, then he should not spare money. They said the hour is auspicious for us. If we do not delay, this is not the time to spare gold immediately. All the people broke off. What is the meaning of broke off? It is the same as in rent the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces. I may 1911 because they bruised and tore their ears. He went as before and said, O holy nation, O holy nation of the holy one, blessed be 74 Rabbi Shimon. Started weeping and said, Then his master shall bring him to the judges. Shema 216. The friends explained that one whose ear heard at Mount Sinai, for to me the people of Israel are servants. Vayikra 2555. Yet threw off himself the yoke of the kingdom of heaven and sold himself to another. His ears should be pierced, and these sinners, wicked, evil people, in their desire to return to their evil ways, did not request the jewelry from their wives and children, but rather tore them from their own ears. Meaning that they damaged the ear that heard at Mount Sinai, you shall have no other Elohim beside me. Shema 203. This is worse than he who sells himself to be a slave. And then they threw off themselves the yoke of heaven that was ordered by Moses and tore their ears, thus revealing that they have no portion in the holy name and the holy nation. 75. What did they do? They divided that gold between them. Eunice and Yambers, as mentioned earlier, one took two thirds and the other took one third. Rose with the sun at the sixth hour of the day, practiced their sorcery and employed their secret arts with verbal magic. Upon the beginning of the seventh hour, they both raised their hands to the hands of Aaron as the words, and he received the gold at their hands. Shema 324 referred to two and not more, namely Eunice and Yambers. As soon as he received from their hands, a voice came out and said, They who join hands for wicked ends shall not go unpunished. Mishlei 1121, for it is written, They are bent on mischief. Shema 3222, meaning, And Aaron said, I, you know the people that they are bent on mischief because he has brought evil into the world. 76. The secret of the matter is that these wicked sinners, magicians, were the sons of the evil by long, the grandsons of the evil live, and they saw that the cup of blessing, namely Malchut, is on the right and is always strengthened by the right, namely from Shisa. They said, If the head of the right, namely Aaron, will be on the side, namely the other side are. Strength and power will be as they should. 77. When the seventh hour of the day arrived, they immediately gave it to Aaron. If he had said to them, First put the gold on the ground, and I will pick it up from the ground, then they would not have been able to accomplish anything with their magic. But he took it from their hands, and the Torah complained, saying, And he received the gold at their hands. See what Aaron did, a prophet wise man, yet he did not know how to protect himself, for had he taken it from the ground, then all the magic in the world would not have been successful. But why were they successful here? Because he received the gold at their hand, and not from the ground. 78. And fashioned it with a graving tool. The meaning is not as people think that he made images with a chisel or something else, but rather the Torah emphasizes that Aaron was not cautious enough, because had he thrown it to the ground immediately upon receiving the gold from their hand, even if he had. Later picked it up from the
that was known to do so and this is the clarification of the matter 81 and it all transpired meaning that both the explanation of the word graving tool in the book of Enoch and that of Rabbi Shimon were present because he certainly placed the gold in a bag and concealed it from view as in the words of Rabbi Shimon as the magicians say so must it be with this type of magic that things that need to be revealed must be concealed and hidden first, meaning that it should be concealed from view. First and afterwards the craftsman uses his craft to reveal IT and that which must eventually be hidden must first be revealed 82 now my beloved sons beloved of my soul what shall I do I certainly must disclose so listen closely and then conceal the words on the side of holiness the true Elohim who is king of the world has become strengthened in three worlds Briya Yitzra and Asiya and we have already learned the secret of each world here the mixed multitude drew from all these three worlds corresponding to Briya it is written he received the gold at their hand meaning that he received something that he did not have until now meaning gold this indicates the world of Briya creation because creation means a new thing that was not in existence before corresponding to Yitzra formation it is written he fashioned it with an engraving tool and corresponding to Asiya it is written and made it a molten calf Shema 324 who has ever seen such sorcerers in the entire World 83 now it can be asked is not it written then I threw it into the fire Shema 3224 and did nothing further then and there came out this calf Ibit and yet you say that he made it a golden calf he answers but heaven forbid that Aaron made this calf and the Torah proves it as it is written and he took the calf which they had made Ibit 20 and it is not written which he had made it is written and he took the gold at their hand and fashioned it it means that by the power of these two units and yambers everything was made and it was as though Aaron himself did it but if these two had not been present the calf would not have been made and would not have come out with skill but who caused it to be made these two because while he was receiving it from their hand they performed their magic and uttered incantations with their mouths and drew a spirit from the other side 84 they drew two spirits together one from the male and one from the female the spirit of it Male was clothed in the form of an ox and the spirit of the female in the form of an ass and they were both combined into one why these two the ox as we have already learned because the first primary cause of injury of the other side is called an ox but why an ass he answers because it is written of the Egyptian magicians that whose flesh is as the flesh of donkeys yesh is called 2320 85 therefore all those of Israel died who joined them with the mixed multitude in their hearts and because there were two forms an ox and an ass it is written these are your Elohim Israel Shema 324 instead of this in the singular because the two were together similarly that brought you up out of Egypt if it brought you up out of Egypt as a plural form instead of singular 86 and made it a molten calf and they said it is not written and he said but rather and they said because Aaron said nothing we have learned that it weighed 125 can't Aaron a certain measurement 87 how can it he written that he received the gold at their hands he asks is it possible that all 125 centenaria were in their hands he answers they had their arms full of the 125 centenaria and that small amount in their hand was considered as the whole amount 88 come and behold it is written and when Aaron saw it he built an altar before it a bit 5 oh holy pious one how good was your intention but you did not know how to protect yourself as soon as he cast it into the fire the power of the other side grew stronger in the fire and the form of the ox emerged as they have talked about the two drawn from the other side namely an ox and an ass immediately Aaron saw it meaning that he saw the other side growing strong immediately he built an altar before it had he not built this altar before then the world would have returned to its destroyed state 89 this is like a robber who goes out to destroy and kill people the king's legion saw the robber going out with great strength what did they do they persuaded the king to go out onto the road and the legion led him to that road where the robber was while the robber was traveling on the road he saw the image of the king standing before him as soon as he saw the king's image he trembled and retreated 90 similarly when Aaron saw that the other side became stronger he gripped onto a remedy he strengthened himself with and drew the holy side and placed it standing before it as soon as the other side saw the image of the king standing before it, it immediately retreated and its strength and power were weakened since Aaron grew strong and the altar which is the secret of Malchut grew strong the other side grew weak 91 come and behold it is written and Aaron made proclamations and said tomorrow is a feast to Hashem a bit a feast to Hashem not to the calf it was to the side of holiness that he made it and to the side of holiness did he proclaim this is the remedy that he hastened to use had he not done this the world would not have remained in existence even so his anger did not abate over Aaron even though he did not intend any evil 92 the Holy One blessed be he said to him Aaron these two magicians drew you toward what they wanted by your life two of your sons will fall and they will be seized for the sin this is what is written and Hashem was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him Devarim 920 this refers to his sons as is written yet I destroyed his fruit from above Amos 29 because the fruits of a man are his children 93 come and behold Aaron placed that altar which is Malchut before him and put the calf which is the other side behind him but his sons placed the other side in front and returned the side of the holiness back like in the sin of the calf as it is written and offered strange fire before Hashem Vayikra 101 they put the strange fire which is the other side before Hashem so we see that his sons were caught for the sin of the golden calf 94 Aaron thought that in the meantime Moses would come therefore he said tomorrow is a feast to Hashem therefore Moses did not smash that altar that he made for if it were as people think that he built the altar before the calf the first thing that Moses should have done would be to smash that altar as Edo prophesied regarding the altar of Bethel and his prophecy was about that altar in Bethel as written in Imelachim 1332 but here at the altar of Aaron it was a different matter as we have explained therefore it is written and he took the calf which they had made Shema 3220 and it does not say and smash the altar 95 come and behold and Aaron made proclamation Ibit 5 meaning that he cried aloud and said tomorrow is a feast to Hashem it is written here made proclamation and said and by Jonah it is written and he cried and said Yonah 34 just as by Jonah it is a call for judgment so here also by Aaron it is a call for judgment tomorrow is a feast to Hashem he Prophesied with that spirit of the altar which is Malchut that judgment would dwell upon them a feast have Chag to Hashem I derived from breaking Aramaic Chagah that I to execute judgment upon you 96 and there were three types of judgment one and Hashem plagued the people Shema 3235 second by the sons of Levi that killed among the children of Israel and 30 gave the children of Israel to drink this is the meaning of tomorrow is a feast have Chag to Hashem as CHAG refers to the killing by the sons of Levi Hashem indicates that Hashem plagued the people and tomorrow informs us that Moses made them drink the ashes of the calf for they lay down that night and in the morning they were found swollen and dead pertaining to this he said tomorrow is a feast to Hashem and the entire remedy that Aaron administered consists of the words he built an altar before it 97 come and behold it is written he saw the calf and the dancing of it 19 but the altar is not Mentioned because Aaron knew that verse he that sacrifices to any Elohim saved to Hashem alone shall be utterly destroyed. Shema 2219 certainly Aaron was saved by the good advice he gave himself to make an altar to Hashem and everything was done with perfect goodwill for he had no evil intent. 98 Rabbi Lazar said to him Father certainly it is so and Yisrael did not make the calf but as for Jeroboam making the calves Yisrael were involved and made a calf he said to him certainly it was so. And they have explained it but Jeroboam sinned and caused others to sin and it is not as some say in the commentaries of the scripture that he made only the appearance of calves so that the children of Israel would not go to Jerusalem but they were not real because he certainly committed a grave sin and he sinned against the divine kingdom just like the mixed multitude by the sin of the calf. 99 Jeroboam said I know that the side of holiness dwells only in the heart of the world which is. Jerusalem I cannot draw that side of holiness in here so what should I do immediately the king took counsel and made I may 1228 he took bad advice he said the other side is immediately drawn to any place and to this land all the more for it desires to dwell in it but it can be clothed only in the form of an ox 100 he asks why did he make two calves he answers Jeroboam said in the wilderness were magicians of whom it is written whose flesh were like those of asses yeshiskel 2320 and therefore they drew two spirits an ox and an ass male and female but they formed them both
is the way it should be in any case because one first on something small namely a calf as explained 102 therefore my beloved children they wanted to draw the name Elohim which is the name of Malchut and it is on the side of Elohim that work was built therefore holy Elohim which is mother that is Malchut that constantly holds the arm of the king and holds back the lash was not there and so Moses had to be there in her place as soon as the holy one blessed be he hinted to him he observed and understood 103 he hinted to him three times O Moses faithful shepherd how strong is your power how great is your might three times he hinted to him as written let me alone Shema 3210 is one that my wrath may burn against them and that I may consume them if it is the second and I will make you a great nation if it is the third the wisdom of Moses in staying the lash was in these three hints for he held the right arm in correspondence to let me alone which is the secret of Chisa. He held the left arm in correspondence to that my wrath may burn against them and that I may consume them which is pure he embraced the body of the king which is Tiferet corresponding to and I will make you a great nation and when he had embraced the body and the two arms from each side meaning with all three Sfirat Chisa Bura and Tiferet he was not able to move and arouse judgment in any direction in the world this was the wisdom of Moses who from the hints of the king recognized in each one of them where it would prevail and he acted with wisdom 104 Rabbi Lazer and the friends approached and kissed the hands of Rabbi Shimon Rabbi Abba who was there said if we had come to this world just to hear the subject it would suffice for us he wept and said woe to us Rabbi when you will depart from this world who will enlighten and reveal the lights of the Torah of this matter namely the question in verse 53 was concealed in the darkness until now when it emerged from there it illuminates the heights of the sky as it is marked upon the king's throne and the holy one blessed be he is now rejoicing with this matter how much joy upon joy has been added before the holy king who will awaken words of wisdom in this world as you do 105 come and behold before Adam sinned he ascended and stood in the wisdom of the supernal light and was not separated from the tree of life when his desire to know good and evil and to go down became strong he was attracted to the other side until he separated from the tree of life new evil and abandoned good therefore it is written for you are not an elf that has pleasure in wickedness nor shall evil dwell with you Tehillim 55 one who is drawn after evil did not reside with the tree of life before they sinned they heard a voice from above from by and new supernal wisdom and were not afraid but after they sinned they were not able to endure even the lower voice of male and female as it is written I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid bear she 310 106 similarly before the children of Israel sinned at the time that they stood at Mount Sinai the filth of the serpent was removed from them because the evil inclination was made void in the world and they pushed it away from them they then were united with the tree of life rose up to the highest levels and did not go down then they knew and saw supernal visions of Zeir and their eyes shone and they rejoiced to know and hear then the holy one Blessed be he girded them with belts of the letters of the holy name which is the secret of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb Shema 336 so that the serpent would not be able to have power over them or defile them again as in Egypt 107 when they sinned with the calf all these supernal levels and lights were removed from them and the armored belts that were adorned with the supernal holy name were removed from them and they drew upon themselves the evil serpent as before and again caused death for the whole world afterwards it is written and when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses behold the skin of his face shone and they were afraid to come near him Shema 3430 they even feared the radiance of Moses face 108 come and behold it is written at first and Israel saw the great hand Shema 1431 they all saw the supernal lights which illuminated in the illuminating mirror which is Zeir and as it is written and all the people perceived the thunderings Shema 2015 by the sea they saw yet did not fear as it is written he is my and I will praise him Shema 152 but after they sinned they could not even look at the face of the mediator as it is written and they were afraid to come near him 109 come and behold it is written of them and the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb Shema 336 for the armor they received at Mount Horeb was removed from them so that the evil serpent could not have power over them once it was removed from them it is written and Moses would take the tent and pitch it outside the camp afar off from the camp of it 7 Rabbi Lazar said what has this passage and the children of Israel stripped to do with that passage and Moses would take he answers when Moses knew that the supernal armor was removed from the children of Israel he said surely from now on the evil serpent will come to dwell among them and if the temple namely the tent of meeting would Stand here among them it will become defiled immediately Moses would take the tent and pitch it outside the camp afar off from the camp because Moses foresaw that the evil serpent would have power over them unlike what was before 110 and he called it the tent of meeting also appointed time if it he asks was it not a tent of meeting from the start he answers at first it was a plain tent now he called it the tent of meeting what is the meaning of appointed time Rabbi Lazar said it has good connotations Rabbi Abba said it has bad connotations Rabbi Lazar said it has good connotations just as an appointed time is a day of joy for the moon which is malchute for holiness is increased in it and no blemish rules over it here too he gave it this name festive time to show that the tent which is the secret malchute was distanced from them and not blemished therefore it is written and he called it the tent of appointed time 111 Rabbi Abba said it has bad connotations because Originally it Malchut was a plain tent as it is written a tent that shall not be taken down its picks shall not be removed forever Yeshua 3320 but now it is a tent of appointed time meaning only for a time but not forever for an appointed time originally the tent which is Malchut gave long life to the world so that death should not rule over them from then on it is a tent of appointed time as in the verse and to the house appointed head mode for all living Yeshua 3023 for now it has been given a set time and life for the world before there was no blemish in it but now it has been blemished before there was a connection and union of the moon which is Malchut and the sun which is Zeir and that is never interrupted now their union is from time to time therefore he called it the tent of appointed time which was not the case before section 12 ornaments by the Mount Horeb Rabbi Yehuda wonders why Joshua was punished along with the children of Israel even though he had not sinned, he had been with Moses at the time of the golden calf Rabbi Shimon answers that when God judges the world he judges it according to the majority of people he explains about the right above and the right below and about the left above and the left below and says that death is drawn to all those who become attached to the serpent and distanced from the tree of life Rabbi Shimon concludes by saying that since the moon Malchud was blemished Joshua alone could not have been spared from the blemish 112 Rabbi Shimon was sitting one night studying the Torah Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yussi were sitting in front of him said Rabbi Yehuda it is written and the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb Shema 336 and we said that they brought death upon themselves from that time on and the evil serpent ruled over them after they had removed him from before he asked Israel deserved it but what of Joshua who did not sin with the calf he asks was the supernal armor that is the ornament which he received together with the others at Mount Sinai removed from him or not 113 if you say that the ornament was not removed from him then why did he die like other people because through the ornament they achieved freedom from the angel of death as mentioned and if you say that the ornament was removed from him he asks why then was it removed from him for he did not sin because he was with Moses at the time that Israel sinned and if you say that he did not receive that crown namely the ornament at Mount Sinai as Israel did he asks why not 114 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion and said for Hashem is righteous he loves righteousness the upright shall behold his face Tehillim 117 concerning this passage the friend said what they had to say yet for Hashem is righteous means that he is righteous and his name is righteous consequently he loves righteousness meaning Malchut whose name is righteousness the upright he is upright as it is written just and right is he to arm 324 therefore all the people of the world shall behold his face and mend their ways and proceed on the straight path as they should 115 come and behold when the holy one blessed be he judges the world he judges it according to the majority of people come and behold when adam sinned with the tree from which he ate he caused that tree which is malchute to become the dwelling place of death for the whole world and caused the blemish that separates a wife from her husband namely the separation of malchute from zeir and, and the sin remained in the moon which is malchute until the children of israel stood at
Camp and since it was blemished even though Joshua retained the crown of his ornament since a blemish dwelt in it in Malchut and it again had the blemish it had through the sin of Adam no man can survive except Moses who ruled over Malchut for he was in the secret of the husband of the queen and his death was from a different direction namely according to the word of Hashem Devarim 345 therefore Malchut did not have permission to keep Joshua alive forever so that he would not die nor any other person therefore he called it the tent of appointed time because a designated time of life dwells in it for the whole world 117 therefore the secret of the matter is that there is right above and right below there is left above and left below he explains there is right above namely in supernal holiness and there is right below which is in the other side there is left above meaning in supernal holiness to awaken love so that the moon which is Malchut shall be connected to the holy place above in Zeir Anpin in order to illuminate 118 and there is left below that separates the supernal love and separates her Malchut from illuminating through the sun and from getting close to it this is the side of the evil serpent because when the lower left is awakened it draws the moon to itself and separates it from above from Zeir Anpin so its light becomes darkened and it is attached to the serpent and it draws death below to all those that became attached to the serpent and became distanced from the tree of life therefore he brought death to the whole world through the sin of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and this is what defiled the temple which is Malchut until the set time when the moon will be mended and shine again and this is why it is called the tent of appointed time 119 therefore Joshua died only because of the scheme of the serpent who approached and blemished the tabernacle which is Malchut as before this is the secret of the words Joshua the son of Nun a young man Shema 3311 even though he is a young man below meaning he is considered as Metatron that is called youth who receives life from Malchut he did not depart out of the tent of it which means that he is like the tent which is Malchut and just as the tent was blemished so was he Joshua blemished and although he had the holy ornament from Mount Sinai since the moon was blemished surely he could not have been alone spared from it and from that actual blemish and we have learned that 120 blessed are the righteous who know the secrets of the Torah cleave to the Torah and fulfill the passage which says and you shall meditate therein day and night Yahashua 18 and for its sake they shall merit the life of the world to come as it is written for he is your life and the length of your days Devarim 3020.